Welcome to the History from the Archives. In this first episode, we will revisit the most important repository of historical information, the archives. The eminent president and one of the founding fathers of the United States of America, Thomas Jefferson, once said, Let us save what remains, not by bolts and locks, which fence them to the ways of time, but by such a multiplication of copies as shall place them beyond the reach of accident. Archives are classified into two, state and religious. And our first destination will be those archives in Spain. Among them, the most, one, one of the most important of these archives will be the Archivo General de Indias, located in Seville. The Archivo General de Indias contained one of the most, one of the largest sources of information in the early uh, Spanish Empire, and of course, a number, a substantial number, uh, actually, are those on the Philippines. And in fact, among the major important, uh, major uh, sources of information on the Magellan expedition, are found in the Archivo General de Indias, but. Other informations, such as that of the encomienda system, the reports of the early uh, conquistadores, the early missions, the creation of the first four dioceses in the Philippines, until the early part of the 19th century are found in the Archivo General de Indias. My first visit in these archives go back to about the early uh, years of, the, of, uh, of 2000. And uh, among the Documents I consulted are those uh, written by the uh, various religious orders and, of course, those that pertain to the Magellan expedition. The other important source of information in Spain would be the Biblioteca Nacional de España in Madrid. Although it is actually a biblioteca, a library, yet there are lots of no documents in manuscript forms that are found in this uh, biblioteca which pertain to the early period of the Philippines. The other archive would be the Museo Naval, although it is called Museo, uh, to some it might be misleading that it's actually a museum, but actually uh, an important portion of this Museo Naval is the uh, archives of the Spanish Navy. And substantial documents on the Philippines are found in this particular archive. In fact, even in those which pertain to the early expeditions in the Philippines, particularly Magellan's expedition, could also be found in this particular um, uh, archive. Uh, the author of the collection of the, those that pertain to the um, documents on the uh, Magellan expedition, the Luaysa, the Saavedra, including the 1565 expedition of the Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, are found in these archives because of the copies written and made by uh, Martin Fernandez de Navarrete, uh, who wrote these uh, vast collections of documents on the Philippines. So, a yeah, very important uh, source of information for anybody interested in doing research in the early colonial Philippines. Of course, there's another important um, archive, but little known to a number of uh, uh, Filipino scholars. The Real Academia de la Historia is not actually simply an office of historians on, uh, on uh, the history of Spain, but it's also a repository of early documents on the Philippines. And the Real Academia de la Historia contains substantial materials on this early 17th century Philippines, including, for example, the eruptions of various volcanoes in the Philippines, uh, the reports of certain uh, religious orders. And I would say it's a very, very useful uh, source of materials uh, for anybody who would be writing on the early period of the Philippines. The other source of information, but of course this would be pertaining to the later part, but then uh, substantial materials also are found in the early period, would be the Archivo Historico Militar, which of course focuses on the military history 
uh, we, uh, uh, in the Philippines also. That, of course, not only in the, uh, Spain, but also in the Philippines. And uh, uh, substantial materials on the Katipunan, which of course pertain to the 19th century, are found in these archives, including those of uh, Rizal. But there are also materials about the military history of Spain, and therefore uh, sub, uh, materials would be uh, available on the early period of uh, the Spanish presence in the Philippines could be found in this Archivo Historico Militar. Now, when you go to the religious archives, two of these archives I found very, very useful, especially in my research for my dissertation, would be the AFIO, the Archivo Franciscano Ibero Oriental, which is located in Madrid, and of course, in as much as Southern Luzon is a Franciscan mission, uh, substantial materials uh, could be found for, by any researcher uh, in these uh, archives dealing with the early period of the Franciscan mission. Um, the Franciscans came to the Philippines in 1578 and of course, uh, and, uh, since then, uh, Spanish missionaries, Franciscan missionaries, had started writing about their experiences in the mission and very, very interesting documents, interesting narratives would surface out of these, uh, out of these uh, documents that are kept in the AFIO. The other important uh, source of religious information would be the Archivo de los Padres Agustinos de Filipinas in Valladolid, the AFAP. Uh, um, we know that the first missionaries in the Philippines were the Augustinians and a lot of documents in the early period of their uh, stay in Cebu and the beginning of the evangelization uh, in Visayas and in the southern part of Luzon are kept in this archivo of the Augustinians in uh, Valladolid, Spain. The other country for which a historian of the Philippines could visit and profit from their research in this archive would be the Archivo in the Torre de Tombo archive in Lisbon. Of course, the Torre de Tombo archives uh, possess materials on the Magellan expedition and of course in the uh, expeditions undertaken by the Portuguese in Southeast Asia. But a few numbers because of my initial uh, investigation in these archives, would yield the, uh, some of them are very, very meaning, uh, very, very useful for a scholar doing research on the early years of uh, the Spanish presence in the Philippines based on the perspective of the Portuguese who wrote about them. Uh, so uh, it's also an important place to visit for any historian uh, dealing with the early period of um, Spanish colonial presence in the Philippines, although from the perspective of the Portuguese. I was told by the Archivero in the story de Tombo that they have not yet actually uh, cataloged substantial number of documents. In fact, he was telling me that there would be about 10 kilometers or so, or even more, uh, of materials which have not been adequately uh, cataloged for historians to uh, see and examine and probably find materials pertinent to early period of Philippine history. The other important archive would be in Italy at the Biblioteca Ambrosiana in Milan. I did my work in this archive in connection with the, my research on uh, Antonio Pegapeta because the, the available the only available uh, original manuscript of Pigapeta, apparently in Italian, is kept in the Biblioteca Ambrosiana. And therefore, there are still probably a lot of documents which I have not examined, but I could find very, very meaning useful in my research on the early period of the Spanish regime, particularly in the early years of the uh, expeditions in various parts of the Philippines undertaken by, uh, the, by the Spaniards from the perspective probably of Italian explorers, particularly Antonio Picapeta, could be found in this particular um, biblioteca or archive in uh, Ambrosiana in Milan, Italy. Thank you for watching this episode. 
I hope this provides you basic information about doing research on the early colonial period in the Philippines from the European archives. For your questions, you may write it down on the comment section, which will be answered in our next episode as we journey in our history from the archives.